My name is Coria Burns, and I am super excited to have 17 of my friends here in Ghana with me. This is my eighth trip to Ghana, and after several trips, people were saying, hey, we want to go too. And I said, let's go. And here they are, 17 of my friends in Ghana for the very first time to see what I know and love. Ghana, this is your home. I know it's some of you's first time here, but what you need to realize is that you are back home. Okay, yes, where everything yes, yes, yes. started, where your ancestors are. This trip, you are gonna connect back to the soil. And for us as Guba, for us, for me, Denta, Corey, who has been very instrumental in making this happen, I'm so glad that she has called upon all of you to come back home. We want to make sure Ghana will forever remain in your heart. It will be emotional, but it will be fun. Be yourself, learn, and just love. I just want to say thank you guys for trusting me. I mean, a lot of you all have seen me come back and forth, back and forth, back and forth to Ghana. And you ask me, what is it? This is part of the reason, people. I know you guys felt it when you got off the plane. And what I call the Ghana effect, because I sleep so well in Ghana, is so much peace and so much joy. If you don't get anything else at the end of this trip, you will say you, you felt peace and you felt joy. So, welcome to Ghana! once again to Ghana and we want to thank you, thank you, thank you so much for taking the opportunity to come back home. We are family, we are all one and we are together make sure that we enjoy and we value and we utilise our homeland in the best way possible. My name is Jennifer, Jennifer Jankofa. I'm the Head of Diaspora Engagement and Partnerships for the Guba Diaspora Network. And the Guba Diaspora Network is a community of diasporans from all over the world. One thing that you'll notice as we go around, as we do the various activities and tours, you will meet the people. You will get a feeling of the beauty within of Ghana. Everyone, I'm Rahman. I'm in Atlanta as well. I've been telling everybody, if y'all didn't know, it's my birthday today, September 3rd. Thank you. So today, coming back to Ghana today is, is my rebirth. So thank you once again. I think Jen has got the menu now. Yes, we've got the chef. Oh, the chef, chef is even here. Oh, yeah. chef. Please tell us what is on the menu for tonight. Okay. Well, we have the starters. Mm -hmm. uh, three starters. We have the bread rolls, we have Ghanaian salad, and we have the pumpkin soup. Pumpkin soup? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then for the main? Yeah, the main we have the banku. Banku? Yeah. Banku is a uh, kondu. It's kondu and then cassava do mix. That's the local food. Yes, the yeah. local food. Banku with, with fish. Yeah, yeah. Fish. And then? And we have beef sauce. Beef, beef sauce? With curry, yeah. We have rice mm -hmm. and then we have uh, beef sauce. Okay, no jollof rice? No. Hey! Oh, yeah, the... Abomination! <laughs> Don't worry, you will have plenty of jollof rice on this trip. I 
I would say Aquaba once again, to the land formerly known as the Gold Coast. That was the name the British gave us because of the abundance of gold they found here. Yeah. But then on the 7th of March 1957, we as Gold Coast wrestle our independence from the British. Right. Hence, there were a few things we needed to change. One was the name, two was the flag, and three was our national anthem. So we changed from Gold Coast to Ghana today that we have. We had our very charismatic leader in the person of a Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, where we will later go to his park. He is a Pan-Africanist who loves everything Africa. So what he decided was to change the name into an indigenous African name that everybody will be attest to. It also coincided that on the south of the Sahara, we were the first to gain independence. We have 16 regions come. We start from the north, we have the Upper East and Upper West, where we share a border with Burkina Faso. Then we have the Northern region, we have the Northeast region, we have the Savannah region, we have the Oti region, and then the Volta region, where we share a border with Republic of Togo. Then we have the Bono region, the Bono East region, the Ahafo region, the Ashanti region. Then we have the Western North and the Western region, where we share a border with La Côte d'Ivoire or Ivory Coast. Right. Then we have the central region, you will be going there, which is actually not the center of Ghana, but the center of the coastal community. Then we have Greater Accra and the eastern region. But the Greater Accra is the most populated in the country. They have over 5 million people in here. It is the capital of the Ghana, and then like every other place in the world, the capitals are always crowded. We have over 40 languages we speak in Ghana here. But predominantly, or our number one language, is the English language. Not to say that that was what the British left for us, but it is to say that this is what is helping us to foster unity among our neighboring countries. of Accra now and we are going to enter into the market area. This area is called the Makola Market, which is an open air market. So we will drive through the market area for you to have experience. advantage of customers who do not have time. So the Makala market is all the way to the right, all the way ahead of us. It's a huge market. You can get from fresh fish to vegetables to utensils. Name it. Once you know what you want, you know where to go and grab it. Do people shop here every day? The answer is yes. This is the area you will get things cheaper and you can bargain for things. Where we are now is the Independence Avenue and just coming to your right is the West African head office of the Latter-day Saints Church. It will interest you to know that the statue up there is not sprayed gold, it is pure gold and it's with a few of the headquarters in the world. This is the West African one, so he has one. We are just about to enter into the National Museum or the Pan-African Museum. This really ushered you into Ghana. We're gonna have a tour here. Feel free, go in there and explore. Good 
Good morning, everyone. Akwaba. I welcome you officially to the National Museum. My name is Joyce. I'll be taking you around. The gallery is divided into four sections. The theme for the National Museum is unity and diversity. The spider web Anansi in the middle of the gallery depicts that. We have the kingdoms, states, nations, and also the beginnings. The beginnings and source archaeological findings like stone tools, terracotta, prehistoric rock arts. We have also states of the Lara Banga Mox, an ancient structure. Over here we have the clan staffs. In Ghana we have five ethnic groups, namely the Akan, we have the Eves, Mole Dagmani, the Guan, and the Gan Adangbe. The Gans are the ones living in Akar here. When we talk of the Akan ethnic group, it consists of the Ashanti, the Fanti, the Nzema, Achimbono. It is very large. These are held by just the Akan ethnic group. It shows a form of identity or recognition. During occasions where kings are going to be present, the head of each family steps out holding this. They have symbols on top of the star, which we term them as totems. They could either be animals or plants. You do not eat the symbol on top of your staff. And every symbol has a quality. Very soon we are moving into what we call the old Accra or the British and Dutch Accra. Observe the buildings here and you will see the European influence in this area. On the right side is the first stone building in this area. The Methodist Church. The Gothic style of building. Small windows, small doors. They believe God lives in there. And after today, we still use it. We are now in British Accra, where we know popularly in books and on the website as James Town. I normally call it Gamashi because that is the name. Jamestown is a name that the British gave because they built the James Fort. Coming up on our right side is the famous lighthouse. This was built by the British to navigate their ships that were coming to shore. That means that this area, slavery went on. This brown monument you see there is the first water fountain that the British built here for people to have clean water. So after this area, we have now moved from British Accra into Dutch Accra. They built a more bigger structure than the British. So coming up on our right will be the Osher Fort. Then to the left is our financial area. We have the Bank of Ghana. We have the Commercial Bank. Coming up on the right here is the regional hospital. We call it the Ridge Hospital. This used to be called the European Hospital. Apart from the merchants and the Europeans, no indigenous gold coaster at that time was seated there, no matter your status in community. 
So we are now at the Kwame Nkrumah. lovely walk to the hair salon which is also owned by a diaspora. just as they wanted. My favorite part of braiding uh, my hair is getting my hair washed. And I know that these women enjoyed that cold water hitting their skull. I love it when I get my hair washed. Hi everyone. You getting your hair did? <laughs> Hi. How's it going? You're about to start? So have you washed your hair? So do you guys know what hairstyles you're doing? Yes. Yeah, you get everything? Yes. Okay. So this place is owned by a diasporan. Right. She's part of the Guba Diaspora Network. Oh, so I wanted right. to make sure that you guys yeah. come to this place because she's part of the, the network. And we need to support right. all of the diasporans who are moving right. here. And so that's why we wanted to make sure that you guys come here. Right. So enjoy the braiding. Sometimes in Ghana, you have like four or five people on the hair braiding your hair, but it's just to kind of make sure it quickens the time. Okay. So like these cool. ladies will look after you. Okay. Anything you need, just let them know. Right. But you, how was the how was the Kwame Nkrumah, the yeah. tours? Oh, the tour was nice. It was good? Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. In the heart of Suhum, Ghana, the group were taken into the world of chocolate. Oh, I'm 
amazing. Welcome to Fair Freak. I'm so proud of you, already proud of you, because you recall Midase, you recall Akwaba, you recall Agu. My name is Ajoa. You are most welcome to Fair Freak. I am so proud of myself for hosting you already, and uh, I'll make sure all expectations are met. And feel free to ask questions because questions would make you find your answers. And the first thing we do is get the cocoa. The cocoa comes in sacks, which weighs 64 kg. And Ghana currently is being sold for 800 CDs. When we get the beans, we cut the bag open, we take out unwanted materials and we roast. So this is the raw cocoa bean. We are testing here. We will do a lot of testing uh, because that will help us understand um, chocolate better. If you have it, try breaking it. Try breaking it into two. So this is the raw cocoa bean that the farmers dry. So we get it like this, raw like this. Is it sweet? No. <laughs> it's, it's bitter. This is cocoa liquor, or some, some people will say chocolate mass. So this one is 100% chocolate. So we will change and go to the factory to see how the production is done. Today we are going to be production ladies and production men. So we're going to put on this. That's our PPE. We have quite safety boots as well. All right, so we work within these lines and start with the process. Freak, they delved into the secrets of cocoa processing, witnessing the transformation from raw cocoa beans to the velvety delight of all savoir. This immersive experience brought them closer to the source of the sweet indulgence we call chocolate, a taste of nature's magic unfolding before their eyes.
Ghana. Okay, so um, as mentioned earlier on, we are in Budu, and this is a small farming community. They do mainly cassava, plantain, cocoa. That is um, what they mainly do, and also the cassava flakes made from cassava. Before the cocoa is transplanted from the nursery to the plant, the farmers first plant plantains, and these plantains serve as shade to the cocoa and also additional income for the farmer whilst he waits for the cocoa to start putting. The cassava also serves as shade to the young cocoa and also serves as an additional income to the farmer. So you would see there is cocoa tree beside every plantain here on this land. Farmers also add cocoa yams to their lands so that they will feed on them. Oh, excellent. Number one, you don't nail against cocoa tree. Don't touch the tree because with a cocoa tree, the fruit comes out of almost everywhere and touching it would fall the flowers. So you can see these are the notes and these are where the flowers come from. And one amazing thing about cocoa is it fruits almost everywhere. Now you are on an 8 acre, 13 years cocoa farm and this farm is an organic farm of course. I'll tell you a short story about an insect we call midge. They come very early morning, so whilst trying to feed, they pick pollens and pollinate the flowers. A successful pollination after a week starts to produce tiny cocoa fruits like this, we call shurrow. So from here, it grows gradually into a full-grown cocoa pod. From the time of pollination to the time of harvest takes six months. A tree can produce about 60, 70, 100 fruits in a year. It's time for us to do some harvesting. And I hope you are ready to harvest cocoa because we are here to work. <laughs> he cuts, then he harvests. Simple. Yes. So who is going to be my first? Do you want the cutlass? to break the pots to take out the beans then we do the fermentation and here initially farmers use the machete to break into the pot but then it also has its disadvantages that is cutting the farmer number one and also cutting into the bean which will affect fermentation so we advise them to use heavy sticks which is readily available on the farm they hold the bean pot like this they hit turn hit turn Hit ten. Then they are done with their pot breaking. So there you have the beautiful cocoa. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So let's take it round for you two. Good morning to you all. You welcome to the central region of Ghana, Asin Manso Slave Market and the Ancestral River Park. 
Ascent Mount is a very important place where you want to learn about the trade. It started without a name. It was established in 1555 as a Portuguese lodge. Now, in the 1600s, the Portuguese realized that trading in us has become more lucrative than trading in other raw materials. So they changed this settlement and they turned it into a slave market. Whilst they turned it into a slave market, it became the busiest of the slave market. Many captives were brought in here to be auctioned. Many of them could not even see the land. They died in the interior. Before we start with the tour, we will be observing a minute of silence for all our brothers and sisters who lost their lives during the trade, on the middle passage, through segregation, through discrimination, and through police brutality. After which I would say, may their souls rest in perfect peace. And all of us here will respond by saying, Ashe, which basically means, may it come to pass. May the souls of our ancestors rest in perfect peace, Ashe. Have you thought about the 99% continental Africans who have their brothers and sisters in you stolen and taken away from us? Nobody brought to us your dead bodies for us to have closure. But we have been through over 400 years of prolonged aches and pains. But my question to you this morning is how do I get my closure? The only time I could get my closure is a day today for you to have made it home. So you're coming here, you are giving closure to millions of our forebears because their wish is to see you on the land again. You are coming here, you are also giving peace to the bleeding land, because this land has so much of our ancestors' blood on it. And your coming here is giving closure to me, because today I know my sisters and brothers have come back to me. In this river was where our ancestors were bathed for the last time. They named this river after us the last bath. The difference between the last bath and the door of no return is the same thing. They are only telling you that we will never come back to this. But in here, they buried our forebears. But later did they know that our forebears they buried were seed. And that seed has grown to become the trees we are today. It is at the back of our ancestors we are still alive today. We are never coming back home for it to be our last bath, no. Because for us Africans, we are proud we are bold and we are stronger. We're going to come back to connect to the rivers of our ancestors. And in that river, we tell our ancestors that when we knew about our story, we have to take over 6,400 6, miles journey just to see you because we know the importance of you to ourselves. So this is why we're going to go through the first part of return, get to that river, and we're going to have a little bit of worship, connecting and thanking our ancestors before we leave. And this is where I urge all of us to say thank you to them. Because if it wasn't for them, we would never be here. Today, you're going to look in the face of your brother or your sister. And whatever you would wish for her, in the rivers of our ancestors, you bless a soul and spirit with it. It's your time to prophesy in the life of your sister or brother in the rivers of our father. And I want to know what you are saying, so that when that day comes, I'll be a witness to it and say, on this day in the rivers of our ancestors, we did bless ourselves. Yes, and this is why you go to your sister with a hug and say, Akwaba for making it home. Come on, let's get involved, let's get involved. Come on, sis. As the sun sets over the Ghanaian coast, the team embarked on a profound journey through history, guided by the echoes of the past. Our odyssey begins at Cape Coast Castle, a haunting reminder of the transatlantic slave trade. This formidable structure witnessed the agony and resilience of countless souls who passed through its gates. Next, we venture into Elamina Castle. Standing as a sentinel by the sea, it too bears witness of the dark chapters of history, serving as a hub for the slave trade.
Both of these castles are Solomon monuments to humanity's captivity, for purity and endurance. They also remind us of the strength in the human spirit to heal, learn and never forget. This is Methodist Rafiki Satellite Village. Uh, Methodist Rafiki Satellite Village is a home. You will not see orphanage on our signpost because just as you did, you have labeled the child. And it's not all the children here who are orphans. Some are here because they are destitute children. May the Lord bless you for the good heart that you have to travel all the way from U.S. to this place. And one of the reasons is because of Methodist Rafiki Satellite Village. One more time, you are welcome. So our children are here. They have a way of welcoming you by singing a song. Are you hungry? Open your mouth. to be celebrating my birthday, not just in Ghana, but here with you. It was on purpose. I wanted to be here today with you um, and come and not just bless you with things, but with presence and with commitment. Um, and as I was sitting there just then, I thought to myself, I should be here every birthday. I should be here every birthday. Yes. Yes. So um, I, I don't know how we set that up, but I would love to, for this to be an annual celebration for me um, and to be here to bless you. And can I just say thank you, Midase, for all that you do. Auntie Rejoice, we truly appreciate you. We have some things for you. And the children and the school, would you like for us to give those to you now or just is it? Yes, okay. sure. Whether it is with shoes, clothes, plenty of school supplies, some things for the kids. There's even maybe shoes for some of the uh, workers here and all that you do, notebooks. And a brand new laptop for you. Hopefully that will be a big help to you as well. Uh, 
Um, and then some of my friends have taken up something that we want to uh, present. Thank you so much. Thank you. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So on behalf of the director, the management, and all the workers as well as the children, we say thank you so much. She said a token, but we don't see this as a token because if everyone should do this, like we wouldn't have problem in the village, but it's difficult to come by people to sacrifice like this. Our prayer is that the Lord will continue to bless you so that you can get more because if you get, I know you wouldn't take it alone. You will continue to support the village. older than 25 <laughs> um, and you know today we just want to celebrate her oh for you bon carded gift from all of us grace and love okay I was just telling Denta like how incredible it was from the end of the table all the way down for all of you guys to be here. I mean, some of you I just met this week, which is incredible. I couldn't even remember the two young ladies at the end of the table, how I even knew them. And for them to follow me all the way to Ghana means so very much. And I could go around the room again and tell you guys how special each and every person is to me. But I just want, I want you guys to know that I really appreciate you. I love each and every one of you. I hope this trip has been everything that you needed and wanted it to be. Not just wanted, but everything that you needed it to be. And thank you. Thank you so much. with Ghana. You've been here several times. You brought your friends. Ah. You've been to Cape Coast. How has it been for you and what would you say to others? The journey has been, you know, slow, but just fast enough. And I'm going to tell you why I say that. 
because in the States, everything is like in, on a mic microwave society. Everything is quick, 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 right? And had I done that on my first visit to Ghana, I would have messed it all up. But I'm glad that I took my time and took all of these trips to get to know the area better, to meet people, to find out from you and Guba how things work, to stay in different areas. Um, and I'm glad Sometimes I did it that you way. Come in, you're like, I'm in speed text. I'm like, Wait. right, right. Or I'm moving to Tema. Yes. Oh, uh, what? <laughs> no. What we learn is not nearly enough. And what we do learn is probably 20% of what's really true. Um, you don't know what you don't know. Um, and the depictions that they show us on TV, on the news, they got it all wrong. And we can't say that it's up to the school system or it's up to the government. No, it's our responsibility. For ourselves, for our children, for those coming behind us, it's our responsibility. I have a sense of responsibility now. Listen, Ghana nightlife is not for the faint. We went to Cape Coast, we gave back, and then we partied last night until we shut Ghana down. It was awesome. No, honestly, it was it was really nice, and it's different from partying in the States. Um, just everybody having a good time. I mean, to be dancing in the rain, in the middle of the street in Ghana, and nobody's even concerned that it's raining. It was awesome, absolutely. The main reason I came is, in recent days, in our education system, they're taking away our history. So I knew that I needed to get the history for myself because what they teach in the States is not what is the real thing. So going to Cape Coast really made that difference. So I'm here to learn about my history, where my roots started. Do you think you'll come back again? Oh, uh, yeah. I, I got my um, non-citizenship today. Huh? Yeah. 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 You want to see? Yeah. Hey. <laughs> I've already you paid. You on the I do. Right here, girl. I'm official. Hey. I'm coming back. Corey, been many times that I told her she go to Ghana again, don't take them, I'm gonna disown her. <laughs> so I found out she was coming on the trip, and so I came. I see different stages of the people of Ghana in terms of within uh, the level, in terms of sense of giving and sharing and community and working among themselves. And I love the traffic because I can see the pattern of respect and smooth moving in and out in terms of which each person, let me let you in and out without a sense of frustration, even though some may be. And would you come back? I already got my card. I want to see the card. <laughs> I want to see the card. <laughs> wow. You've got your non-citizen Ghana card. Yay. He's definitely coming back. What has been the moment for you? Well, I think the moment for me was I missed the trip when my other family members came. I had gone to East Africa, I had gone to South Africa, but I had never come to Ghana. So my other family members came back in 2017. So when I heard Coria was doing this trip, I said, yeah, count me in. Let me find me a roomie, right? Yes. <laughs> How has the journey been for you so far? Um, very good. Um, I came. It's been such an amazing, emotional, and spiritual uh, revitalization. And so I truly do feel at home here. Um, in the U.S., you always have a veil up. You know, you can never show your, really, your true colors. Yeah. Um, but here, it's like we're all family, and we can just kind of relax and just, you know, nurture each other. So it's been an awesome experience. I'll definitely be back for you sure. Definitely an international travel is important, but coming back to where you are from, um, it's just unique. Like other other cultures, they, they can draw that line. They know they're from Norway or whatever, and yeah. they can go 15, 20 generations. But specifically in the U.S., everything starts with slavery. Yeah. And so, like from the beginning, you just consider yourself a slave, and then maybe you got better, maybe you're better now. But there was a life before that. Yeah. And you were kings and queens and successful yep. businessmen, and all these things before the atrocities, before the, you know, chaos. And so, to be able to reconnect, you know, who you are from the ground up, um, will push you forward and, and give you more of a purpose and more of a why in your day-to-day -day life. For me, 
it was just go. So mm. I, I mean, I hadn't been international too much, and I said that was the place to go because these people in America is crazy. <laughs> so, um, but I, what I have experienced here uh, solidified why I came, um, the history, and and seeing the truth. Even though I did know a lot of the history, but I, you know, to see it yourself and feel it yourself, like you said, the castle, it was a, a really a, a experience, you know. So, and then meeting all these wonderful people was nice too. Everybody on the same page. Yeah. So it was very, we thank you very much. You're welcome. You're welcome. And what about you? Was it a go for you as well? It was not. It okay. was a planned trip. Okay. Um, so I'll have a transparent moment. Mm -hmm. um, I have a disease that is eating at my spine. So my spine is deteriorating. So I won't oh. be able to travel a couple years from now oh. freely. So I wanted to come here for the knowledge, for mm -hmm. one, um, and for healing. And I got that today. That's amazing. And you've got your Ghana non citizen card! I do! <laughs> Yes. That means you are definitely coming back. Yes. <laughs> I would like to have a home and business start doing business with Yeah, because you're a caterer. Yes. yes. There is an, a level of humanity and fight that comes to you being here, seeing the castles, uh, as both of them. And because they don't line up with the way the history's been portrayed. And to see touch in real real life, to realize those buildings were built by enslaved people and they stand still today. That's extraordinary strength, immaculate, amazing uh, strength and gifts that you take to and believe in at a whole nother level, having been up. So you're coming back? Oh, I will, I will come back. Oh yeah, I, I, I believe that you need to give yourself even more time um, in some of the places where we've been. They're difficult to be in, but you, you must give your time, yourself the time to continue to walk through, continue to expand. I believe that there are others who need to, to see this in a different way. It gives new meaning to some documentaries that have been shown in the U.S. that you never, at least I did not, um, look at with the same lens that I would really go back and look at them now again. What's the one thing that you think you're going to take away from your Ghana experience? Level of connection. Um, it seems a far place away, and it is by flight or miles, but truly when you drive through here every day, walk, and see the level of black people, mm -hmm. people with black skin, <laughs> everywhere. Yeah. Every billboard, by the way. Every billboard, <laughs> right? yeah. It, it's just little interesting things like that that know, wow, this is different. Mm -hmm. And it's not that that has not existed in the U.S. and some neighborhoods. It has. But it doesn't exist in that way. Um, uh, across yeah. an entire country. Yeah. Have you, any of you seen people that you think, oh my God, that looks like my auntie <laughs> or my uncle? Uh, no, you, but, you, but I've been told I look like several people. So I'm like, yeah, you look gone in. It does like, show, show. Mm -hmm. Girl, I look gone in with some, <laughs> some makeup. <laughs>
the love, I can't put it really into words. That's in simple and layman's terms. But what I feel is a spiritual experience that I can't put into words. What about my sisters here? Told your parents that you were coming what did they say what was their reaction my mother is excited like she's excited and then my son his first words was when you come back <laughs> <laughs> but are you the first in your family to return yes I am. wow I am. that's amazing how has it been for you it's been life-changing um, initially, when we started on our first day, the question was asked, why are you here? And my answer was, I'm just here to have fun. Mm. And then as we neared our last day, um, this has been a trip that has changed my life forever. Um, I connected with the people. I connected with the children. I connected with the grandmothers. I connected with the ancestors. Yeah. And uh, I do believe it's the ancestors that brought me back. And so, yeah, forever life changing. Yeah. And you'll be back? Uh, um, I live here. I'm not leaving. <laughs> <laughs> she ain't leaving! <laughs> we have eaten all this fabulous food, but it wasn't until I went into the Rafiki village and was served food in a container, a lunchbox, and I can tell that somebody's grandmother prepared made that. that. Uh -huh. It was my best meal. It was some snapper and jollof rice Aye. and then some a spicy sauce, like a pepper sauce. Yes, yes. The, the green one oh. or the black one or the red one? Was I believe it was a green one. The sauce. green one. They're coming back. Yes. They're coming back. Yes. And they are home. The fact that you've made that step, that bold step, is that's it. And it's like it, like you said, it's life changing. And I hope that you will tell more.